What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the workbench. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to solder. Soldering, soldering, the lost art in uh, some circles of hobby nerds. If you don't know how to solder, are you really trying that hard? I spend a lot of time soldering wires. Most of the things that I fix for folks when I meet my new nerd friends are their plugs. Traxxas plugs, uh, the red Dean's plugs, T-plugs, EC plugs have all been a little problematic for me. So I've been a big fan of these AMAS brand style of plugs. They do a couple different sizes. These are XT60 size, kind of your normal 10 scale size for like maybe two cell or rock crawling three cell stuff. And there's an XT90, which is the next size bigger. So if you're using three cell, four cell, big power stuff, probably look into the XT90 stuff. But for most of the two cell stuff um, and rock crawling, XT60s are more than enough. So a buddy dropped off an RC car and it had been sitting for a very long time. And most of the problem wasn't anything with his electronics is his plugs are all gross and nasty so we're gonna lop these off and put some fresh ones on and i was sitting around the other day with my buddies and we were talking about how you change your battery plugs like the safe way to do it and this that and the other thing so i got a couple items on the bench to show some options on how to keep yourself safe while you change batteries because if you don't know what you're getting yourself into, when you change a plug on a LiPo battery, you can have a very bad time. The, the wires can touch and then you can have a super awesome fire. So before I do anything, I try to storage charge the battery. So it's not full charge. That's kind of a big deal. And then if you didn't know, you just cut both wires at the same time. No, I'm kidding. Of course I'm kidding. You cut one at a time. And what I do, I actually leave this plug on there. So with that guy, you know, kind of over here, he's not going to get in the way. you got a lot less chance of these guys making contact. So first things first, when it comes to soldering, what kind of solder or solder do you use? If you're lucky and you can find good lead, tin, rosin core solder, that's the stuff you want to use, but it's real hard to find these days. Most of the international electronics go to a lead-free solder. If that is the case, just make sure you pick yourself up some uh, soldering flux because that'll make your life a whole lot easier. I still, to this day, have a little stuff of liquid flux just for in case I end up with taking the factory wires off, the flux will make a, a huge difference. And then always have a good set of wire strippers so that you can strip and tin your wires correctly, a decent set of cutters. And I like to do a spring-loaded set of needle nose so that I can grab the wires and hold everything kind of sideways. Because we've talked about this in most of the videos. You try not to solder with the wires going up because the, the solder will wick into the wire. And that's bad, makes the wire real stiff and brittle. Uh, and solder's a terrible conductor, sorry. It's not, make, it's not there to make the wires contact the surface it just made the wires to hold in place so you tin everything and you try to use almost as little solder as possible if you can so that's enough talking about soldering let's actually do some soldering or soldering but i'll say aluminum not aluminium so you lay that guy on the side and then you get the solder oh and then the iron itself a 60 watt iron works all right. Uh, this is a Haku station, so it's adjustable temperature. I have it cranked up to 800 plus. It's like 850 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a little higher than that probably because this guy hasn't been calibrated in a very long time. And I have a, a damp sponge in the solder base here. I'll bring that in here to show you. A damp summit sponge in the solder base just to keep all the stuff clean on the solder iron, but I keep it off to the side. So when you are soldering wires, you want to tin the wires by melting the solder onto the wire. And then as it starts to flow, you can actually push the solder onto the wire itself, not the iron, and it'll melt on there. And then what you're trying to do is just put one light layer of solder all the way around. You don't want to have any exposed wires. I got just a little bit of exposed wire there. And I don't like that myself because it lets the wires kind of pop out and do some goofy stuff. So I try to hit it with just a little more solder when that happens. And that is it. Now. My super pro tip is if you work on plugs a lot, you will find yourself uh, burning your fingers on a regular basis. When I'm doing a lot of plugs, a lot of times overheating the plug is real bad and it can distort things. So what I try to do is plug one in halfway and then I can grab the other one with a pair of vice grips and that acts as kind of my mobile bench. Easy, keep it in a toolbox, it does lots of fun stuff. On these guys, they're marked pretty clearly in positive and negative, make sure you don't mess that up. I put just a little bit of solder on the connector itself because the big thing with doing power plugs that can cause you problems is that if the wire floats in the solder too much, you'll end up with a very poor connection and you don't want that. So you try to use as little solder as you can for the most part. 
So this guy gets laid like that, and then I hit this, and you try to push the wire gently down in, give it a little twist as you go, and that way it's all the way down on the metal surface. And you got a nice uniform solder joint all the way around. And I forgot the insulator. Don't forget the insulator every time I do that. So good, you get to watch again. So I apply the heat. Try to twist the wire while you push it down to keep all those strands together. And that's it. Nice uniform solder joint. And you can see the wire is not, it's right on the surface, not in the you know, floating or anything like that. So now that that is done, because I'm going to work right next to that I'll take a piece of tape and just put it on there for safety just to be safe it's better safe than having sparks and melted things on your workbench trust me ask me how I know so that's just gonna sit there so that when I'm working with this wire I'm not running the risk of too much extra damage cut this guy off and you see it flings right over there so that's always nice strip these wires and you just want to break the surface, and if you can, you can roll it with your fingernail and then twist the insulation off, and it'll pre-twist the wires for you so it tins up a little bit better. Grab this guy with the needle nose. Do the solder, the tinning. So I got the heat of the iron on the side, and then I feed the solder into the back side of the wire, and it melts it onto the wire, and that usually gets the tinning done nice and quickly I got a nice well oops, still need just a little bit on that other side so it's always good to look at the whole wire because I've often been in a rush and I'll pre prep a bunch of wires come back and I find that I didn't tin everything just right so that can lead to problems stick that guy right there tin this guy and don't forget to uh, lace this through here should probably do this part first where you just put this on the base right away but because we cut the wires one at a time for safety that's not what's happening so this gets laid on top you hit this with the iron push it down give it a little twist and that is done so now we got both sides taken care of get a nice visual peel this guy off and this just clicks into place there you have it, XT60 upgrade. Hopefully, we didn't just waste our time and put this good plug on this tor tortured old battery of my buddy's, but it, should, it seemed like it checked out okay. The tricks of the trade is a vice grips, a wire stripper, a wire cutter, a wood block, so you melt your bench, some good solder, and a chisel tip iron. These guys are, give or take, a little bit bigger than a, the thickness of some 12 gauge wire, maybe about the thickness of some 10 gauge wire, so I call that four or five millimeters. Let's, uh, let's throw the caliper calipers on here and see what it is it's about five or six I'm not gonna melt my calipers for that we walk through that the slow way let's do it one more time but we got a couple of these to do so I might as well share that with everybody I feel like watching folks solder is one of the better ways to learn how to solder it's the way that I learned how to solder so I like kind of hold court when I solder over to Buddy's house. I'm like, hey, everybody, I'm going to solder. Come watch how you do this, because it seems like nobody knows how to solder correctly. And a lot of times, they'll pop up questions and ask you, why do you do it this way? Why do you do it that way? So I figured we were more than due to, to talk about soldering one more time. I do get a lot of feedback and comments, you know, emails and stuff about the soldering videos, which I think is great. It's helping me make better soldering videos each time, covering all the things each and every time. Because I think every once in a while you kind of leave some information out and you forget that you're trying to tell everybody all of the information. Oh, that's a little high up in the air, so the solder's starting to wick in. We don't want that. Got that, give it a visual, slide the insulator on. And grab this guy again. I think we're gonna do it without the extra plug this time, just to be crazy. Put that like that. And done. Ooh. And I'm just going to do that little insulator job again, just because this is, batteries are serious business, and LiPos should be respected for what they are. It wasn't, it's, it wasn't too long ago, another one of my online friends posted a horror story of a LiPo fire. They're uh, 
Luckily, they had it in their garage with a smoke detector, and the smoke detector stopped them or was able to get them out there so they could stop their whole house from burning down. So that was good to hear, but still, I mean, lipo safety is no joke, folks. And see what I'm talking about? That's why I got the insulator on there. I got a metal ne needle nose that I just almost could have shorted to that. So it lets me be a little careless at times, too, I suppose. So this guy, we're gonna hit it with the solder, put the iron underneath, it will sit in the solder, and then we feed some more solder on top. Just enough to kind of cover up the wires so they can't see the strands. Then I like to give it one more roll. Get this guy in position, put it through the insulator. We're gonna tin this guy. And then boom. Give them both a quick visual inspection, make sure everything looks pretty good, and slide the insulator back on that. Oops. There, that's two. This one also needs to be redone because he was running an adapter and it melted the adapter. So if, that's another pro tip, never ever use adapters. That's enough, I'm not gonna show you guys me soldering boring wires anymore. If you are working with solder, this is noxious stuff. The fumes that come off there are bad. You wanna work in a very well ventilated area. You wanna wear eye protection. Solder splashes and does all sorts of bad things. And you wanna work on a piece of wood usually so that you don't melt your sweet pit mat. Not that that matters, but uh, for safety's sake, always a well ventilated area and wear your eye. Also. This is a, a bonus for everybody that stays all the way to the end. Did you know we give away free RC stuff? We do it twice a month. That's right. All you have to do is tune into our podcast to find out how to win. So jump over onto your favorite podcast service. Look up RC stuff powered by Hobbywing, or you can go to anchor.fm slash Hobbywing and tune in. Find out how you can win some free RC stuff. So thanks for tuning in. If you do have a question, a comment, or a concern, shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. Comments and stuff like that, we're probably not going to reply to the comments ever. So shoot us an email. That way you can get a real answer from a real life person, probably even myself. <laughs>